Hey, this is going to be an ECW review for the 21st of April, and, well, it wasn't a good show, was it? It wasn't a vintage episode of ECW here. Um, it didn't even really feel like a show, it just felt like a random selection of segments hastily pasted together. It just, there wasn't much care going into this episode. ECW is a very hit and miss show, sometimes you'll get an episode with three really good matches on it which is something of a novelty in pro wrestling TV shows these days to have an episode with three good wrestling matches on it, but sometimes that's the case with ECW, and sometimes you get this, which is just a mess. Um, anyway, this mess started off with Finlay and Hornswoggle coming down to the ring, highlighting the most bizarre moment in the supplementary draft, which was uh, to split up Finlay and Hornswoggle. Hornswoggle's gone to Raw on his own, um, Apparently he's going to compete as a singles wrestler, which will presumably <laughs> involve a feud with Chavo Guerrero, in which he, Chavo has the job to him 18 times in a row. Um, yeah, weird decision. Uh, Hornswoggle says, as it's last night on ECW, he wants to wrestle. Um, Tyson Kidd's music plays, which means, yeah, a Tyson Kidd promo is coming up. Matt Stryker talks about how Tyson Kidd backstage is very cocky and is always boasting, um, whereas when he's on camera, he is a complete mute, and Natalia does all the talking. Um, Tyson Kidd comes to the ring, and he says, he says his one sentence of the night, he says, um, he's glad Hornswoggle's leaving for rocks, it means talented wrestlers like himself will have more time to showcase their abilities. Which makes perfect sense, and is actually probably the reason Hornswoggle has been moved to Raw, uh, to make ECW less of a novelty act, and uh, to make, you know, to make it a show with lots of good wrestling and young wrestlers, uh, showcasing their talent. You know, basically. Um, yeah, that made sense. Uh, then Tyson Kidd said his one sentence, and of course is exhausted now. So Natalia comes in and starts talking, uh, to Hornswoggle and mocking him basically because he wants to wrestle tonight and says why does he want to wrestle anyone could beat him in a match heck even I could beat him in a match and I was like what do you mean even you could beat him in a match what do you mean even I mean <laughs> you're you're a diva you're an actual wrestler of course you could beat him in a match he's just some guy you know you're not like a 92 year old arthritic grandmother I mean <laughs> of course you could beat him in a match that's supposed to be a given um, but apparently not, because they have a match next, um, which starts off, it starts off Natalia starts doing the test of strength on Hornswoggle and then lifts her hands up so he can't reach them. Hornswoggle gets furious after a while and spears her. Um, Tyson Kidd comes up onto the apron for no reason. Yeah, there's been a lot of people jumping onto the apron for no reason in London so far. Um... Finley pulls him off the apron, or maybe Hornswoggle pushes him, I, I don't really know. Natalia goes to check on him, and Hornswoggle wins with a roll-up, which means a talented female wrestler just jobbed to Hornswoggle. Literally any man can beat any woman at wrestling. Santino can beat all the divas, he is Miss WrestleMania, and now Hornswoggle can beat Natalia. Uh, which presumably means... Hornswoggle has been moved to Raw to feud with Santina over the women's title? I, I don't know, that's the best I can think of. Uh, but yeah, that was that. Oh, actually it wasn't. Natalia goes backstage, um, talks to Tiffany uh, about getting... She wants Hornswoggle fired, basically. Totally pointless, he's already going to Raw. And Natalia says there's been a match made for WWE superstars uh, between Tyson Kidd and Natalia versus Hornswoggle and Finley. Um, which kind of points to me that my uh, WWE Superstar reviews aren't going to get any more favorable. That sounds terrible, um, and it sounds like Sunday Night Heat is basically what it sounds like. Anyway, then we had Evan Bourne versus Paul Burchill. This was by a mile, by an absolute mile, the best match of the night, although the other two matches were a leprechaun versus a woman. Leprechaun and Vladimir Kozlov um, defeating some jobber, which, you know, I'm not even sure which of those two scenarios is more ridiculous. But anyway, Paul Burchill, Evan Bourne. This was a good match. Bourne got off to a fast start, then Katie Lee distracted him. 
Birchall took over, used lots of good heel tactics, lots of good striking with the knees, uh, really, really vicious striking, and lots of uh, sort of grounding rest holds, but it nev the match never really got boring despite all those rest holds. He did a dragon sleeper, he kept it varied enough. Um, yeah, lots of good stuff. Uh, Bobby was remarking last week how it was good to see um, someone, uh, John Morrison, have a strength advantage over Evan Bourne. It was also good to see this week Paul Birchall have a strength advantage over Evan Bourne. Uh, it meant he did a lot more, a lot cooler moves basically. He did a double underhook overhead suplex. He did a uh, leg trap suplex overhead. And he did the ST Joe, you know that move Samoa Joe does when they run into the corner and he lifts them up with one arm in a sort of uh, rock bottom position and then throws them to the ground. Um, yeah, he did that. He also did the running knee strike to the corner. Um, yeah, anyway, Evan Bourne starts a comeback, does lots of cool kicks, does a nice roll up. Everything Evan Bourne just does just looks better than anyone else. You know what I mean? He, he does a roll up and it just looks fantastic. Um, the end of the match comes when Birchall gets him in an electric chair position. Bourne does a reverse Hurricane Rana, which uh, makes Birchall land on his head, then does a Shooting Star Press, and that's the end of the match. Good to see the Shooting Star Press, as always. Uh, this was a good match. It made Birchall look good, and it, it made Bourne look good. Birchall didn't have to job here. He put, you know, he, he put on a really good show. So this was a good match, showcasing the young talent in ECW. Uh, and <laughs> now, a very, very bad match, showing the lack of, you know, the, the bad things about ECW. Vladimir Kozlov takes on uh, some local guy. Um, there's a promo beforehand of Kozlov just kicking bottles and stuff. He never does kicks in matches. He never does those sort of kicks, those you know style kicks during his matches. I don't know why he does them in all his promos. Uh, basically, you know this is just a squash. Kozlov wins it with his finisher, the choke slam, uh, spine buster, which gets. Absolutely no reaction from the crowd ever. It's a terrible finisher. I wish on his time off he would have come up with a new finisher because this just doesn't work. Nobody cares. There's no ooze or as in the crowd. It's just like, oh, the match is over. And that's that. Um, yeah, so Kozlov wins. Then the main event is a contract signing between Christian and Jack Swagger for the ECW title match at Backlash. Yes. It's always good to end a show with a contract signing. Christian comes out to a really good reception. Um, the problem was the WWE has told him to do a really serious promo here, um, which even Jack Swagger remarks on. Jack Swagger says, what, are you not, not gonna mock me for the way I talk or, or my ridiculous white suit? And uh, Christian, you know, he just doesn't, come back and I was just like I want Christian to do a funny promo. Christian is the master of the funny promo. Just let him do it. He hasn't been allowed to do one in ECW yet. It's ridiculous. Um, but then Swagger says the reason you're not talking is because you're scared of me. You've seen me and you realize that I'm bigger, I'm stronger, I'm faster. In what world is Swagger faster than Christian? Um, yeah Christian goes actually the reason I'm not talking is for none of those reasons. I could, I could mock you. I could mock the fact you're wearing your, um, the same suit you wore to your graduation, which was funny. And I wanted more of that. I want him to do the funny promo. Christian is great at getting over with the fans if he does funny promos. That's why he's not getting over in, a, in arenas in the U.S. because they won't let him do, you know, the funny promos where he mocks people. Um, anyway, he's doing a serious promo and he says basically that while you're focusing on how much bigger you are, how much stronger you are, how much faster you are, he's not faster. I'll be focusing on uh, winning the title and making you an ex-champion. This annoys Swagger. Uh, they have a little fight and Swagger wins it with the gut wrench powerbomb. Swagger basically did a speech which said, you can't beat me, which of course means he's going to lose horribly at Backlash. Uh, yeah, I'm running out of time, so that was pretty much it. Uh, you know, a really rubbish show, uh, one good match. P please feel free to comment on this video, to rate this video, uh, to ask questions. Uh, your views are important. And subscribe if you wish, and I will see you for a WWE Superstar slash TNA Impact review.